Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Obviously, this is a big moment for so many women on both sides of the aisle and on both sides of uh, the political spectrum. My first question is, when you saw that Roe versus Wade was overturned, what went through your mind? Well, I thought, well, now we have two lives that we have to think about. So, yes, you're talking about women, but you're also talking about the life of the baby. And so now it comes back to the states, and the states will make that decision about uh, what we're going to do about the life of the mother and the life of the baby. Did you consider it a celebratory moment for you? Well, yeah, because I believe the baby in the womb wants to live. Now we have to make sure that we take care of the life and the health of the mother and, of course, rape and incest. But at the same time, I thought this is excellent. We get an opportunity to talk about this some more because Roe vs. Wade never really decided very much, you know, when it comes to the, the country was always up in arms about it. So now it comes back to the states where it really belongs. All right. So Governor Glenn Youngkin last week announced that he would support a ban on most abortions after 15 weeks. Is that mm -hmm. something that you would also support if you are the tie-breaking vote on such a matter? Yeah, simply because I believe that, uh, well, we know, for example, that the baby in the womb by 15 weeks uh, is doing tumbling, tumbling in his mother's womb. And he's also starting to suck. Uh, he's looking more and more, you know, like the baby we're going to be seeing. and. The heartbeat is there. There's so much going on, and most most people generally agree when you look at uh, the stats that that's what they want. They they don't want abortion all the way up until the time that the child could be born. That's barbaric. That's not what we do in America. No. So. Um Representative Bob Good on Twitter after Governor Yunkin came out with this proposal basically said there was no point in what he called a modest proposal and said life begins at conception. So I just wonder what mm -hmm. your response is to those who feel that a modest proposal just is not enough and there's no point. Well, I'm not sure I understand what they mean by modest proposal. I know that we have to ensure that the mother's life, her health is taken into account. For example, if she were to have cancer, and she has to have, you know, the treatment. And maybe the treatment will cause the death of the baby. I can't ask her to sacrifice her life. She's got, it, you know, she, she wants to take the cancer treatment. She's got to be able to decide that. That's all, you know, I'm saying. Let's think about what else we could do, though. It's not just about uh, abortion. It's also about life. It's about the continuation of life. And so we, we need to, well, here in Virginia, I don't know about the other states, I have no authority in the other states, but we need to make sure that we bring down the death rate when it comes to women, and especially black women uh, in, in Virginia. We've got something called the Maternal uh, Mortality Review Team, and we, they're finding that, of course, you know, black women were dying in numbers that we shouldn't be when we're having our children. In fact, I almost died when I had my, my last baby. That was in California, of course, so many years ago. But still, so, and I have a few suggestions here that I want to talk about. Uh, we need uh, more midwives and doulas, you know. Um, we need Medicaid, for example, to be upped, the, the recompense of that, the compensation, because, you know, not many doctors are accepting that. So we need, we need that to happen. Then, of course, we have to make sure that we increase minorities in the health care fields because uh, black women are sometimes more comfortable with people who look like them, you know. Th th there's so many things that we can do. Let's talk about life. Uh, why are we losing so many of our babies? That's what we need to find out. Mm -hmm. and, and furthermore, the baby's parts are being sold. Is that what we want? The selling of baby's parts? I don't think so. So political realities aside, we obviously understand Virginia is a divided government and there will have to be democratic buy-in, at least in the near future, if any of these proposals are to pass. But again, putting that aside, how many weeks into a pregnancy do you personally think that abortion should be banned? Well, the governor has said that he's putting forward 15 weeks. I think that's a, a, an agreeable time period. Do you think that the state should go further? Further than what? The 15 weeks? Further than 15 weeks. No, 15 weeks. 15, I, as I said, at 15 weeks, uh, we know that the baby is, you know, doing a sucking thumb, is making movements so that the mother is feeling all of this, and the and, uh, baby is 15 weeks. 
On the campaign trail, you said in a previous interview that you would support a ban after about six weeks of pregnancy, similar to what had been done in Texas, when a fetal heartbeat can be detected, some contend. Mm -hmm. um, are you walking back that position? Is that not something no, you No, I'm support? not sure that I'm walking that back. I'm just saying 15 weeks. Let's do the 15 weeks. After that, if that is accomplished, I should say, if the political realities change in the future, mm -hmm. Do you see Republicans pushing for a more restrictive ban? And is that something you would support? I don't know if they will or won't. What I'm telling you is 15 weeks. And so you would not support anything further? I don't know what other people would do, and I'm telling you 15 weeks. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to tell you 15 weeks, and you're wanting to go here and there. I'm I don't understand. I'm not weeks. trying to ask you to speak for other people. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you what you would support. So you I think this is like the fifth time that you're asking so you me, and I'm not saying 15 anything. weeks. Okay, you wouldn't support anything beyond that. Okay, all right. Um, now, I'm also wondering, you mentioned you think that the life of the mother needs to be mm -hmm. protected. I, mm -hmm. I assume, I take that to mean that's an exception that you would support. Yes. Um, would you support a bill that did not include exceptions for rape and incest as well as for the life of the mother? That's right. We need to make sure that we have rape, incest, life and health of the mother. Understood. But I said that at the very beginning, yes. Right. Um, there are some states that have trigger laws already on the books, of course, some mm -hmm. that are prior to take effect, others that are facing legal challenges. Um, some of those have penalties for providers that would choose mm -hmm. to move forward with abortions despite these bans. There's also discussion about whether women who seek an abortion despite a ban should be penalized. Do you think that there should be penalties for providers or women that try to disregard bans on the books in states? The law is the law. And we're looking to see what the laws will say. You know, I mean, what the, the bills will say. The bills are still being crafted. I'm not even sure that any pen has been really put to paper about any of this. What I'm saying is 15 weeks, we've never done what I think um, what you're asking is to uh, penalize the woman. We've never done that at all. Um, but why don't we talk about the health? Why, why don't we say, why are we having these many abortions? Let's come back to, we're talking about two lives, not just one, because the mother is not having a lizard. She's having a human being who is half part of her. And the baby has its own body. And the blood that is running through the baby isn't even her blood. So they're two separate bodies. And what do we want? Let's, why don't we talk about adoption? Why don't we talk about, we can talk about adoption. Uh, you know, you, you, you change a few letters around from abortion, you have adoption. Uh, we can talk about, in Virginia, as a, what, I think the census show that 2019, uh, women, black women, are 10% of the population, and yet they're having 45.5% of the abortions. Why? Why is that happening? We need to find out why. Because you know, and I know, and I think our listeners know, that there's something about abortion that when you get right down to it, you just, you just know in your heart that there's a part of it that has to be wrong. Why? Because I've heard people say that a woman has had, for example, four abortions. And the person will say, four abortions? Why is she having four abortions? Well, listen. If an abortion is a good thing, then why are some of our politicians who are Democrats saying that it ought to be rare? If it's good, then why should it be rare? And if she's having four and you're saying, well, you know, she ought to be doing something else now, come on, four, four abortions? Then what, wh why are you saying that four is too many? Three is too many. I just want to clarify, are you opposed to penalties for women that seek an abortion yes. or providers? Yes. So you, that would not be on the books in Virginia, at least something that you would vote for? I don't know if that's right. on the book, you know. Understood. I, yeah, I'm just saying I'm opposed to the penalties for the mother. And for the provider? I don't know, let's, let's talk about that. Let's think about that. Let's see what that looks like because if a woman dies as a result of an abortion, we're gonna have to have some penalties because we don't know if the provider uh, we don't know if the provider did the right thing. We don't know if he was negligent. We don't know. I suppose what I mean is if a provider like were to bypass a ban. 
let's think about all of this. Oh. This is, you know, the way we make laws is we argue things through, we hear from the experts, we do all that. Understood. Um, so the previous lieutenant governor broke a tie on a bill that removed ultrasound requirements, 24-hour mm -hmm. waiting period, state-mandated counseling, um, expanded who could provide an abortion. Uh, if, uh, that were to be, if a bill to repeal that were to come before you, is that something you would support? Well, you said a whole lot of things in there, so I would say um, at least we get the ultrasound to see where the, the baby is. Other things are, I guess you haven't made a firm decision on that. No, I mean, say. I haven't thought about the, all, all of this. It's all new. Right. It's all new. Mm. Okay. Fair enough. Um, now, Virginia is one of 23 states that allow abortion via telemedicine. Um, there's a lot of talk in certain red states about further restricting traveling across state borders, uh, perhaps restricting medication abortions. Is that something that Virginia should look at doing, restricting telemedication abortion, restricting uh, abortion via the pill by mail? I don't know. This is all new. These are things that we have to talk about. And there are Democrats who believe what you're saying, and there are Republicans who believe what you're saying, and vice versa. So let's get this all in the public square so we can talk about it and so we can vote on it. I don't know. You know, there are a number of people who, in the wake of this decision, aren't just concerned about abortion rights, but they're concerned about things like same-sex marriage. Mm. There was an opportunity to put it on the ballot and enshrine the right to same-sex marriage in the state constitution. We are talking about abortion. Oh, I understand, but in the context of that discussion, this I is don't, a concern. Yeah, Would but, but the, the Supreme Court has already said that that's not going to be part of the issue. That's a whole other thing that's totally different from abortion. Would you support a state-level ban on same-sex marriage? Abortion is talking about two lives. Um, I have been, and I've been on the record to, uh, saying that when it comes to uh, civil unions, I'm all for that. Um, if that's what the people want to do, then that's fine. Would you I don't support have a, a state-level ban on same-sex marriage if the Supreme Court paved the way for that type of policy? Let's keep you know, you're, you're always wanting to bring in these other things. I mean, we could be talking, and no matter how I say it, you change it on me, and you make it seem like I'm trying to say something that I'm not trying to say. I said I support the civil union, and yet you want to keep saying well, something I'm, I'm else. Just, it's a yes or no question. I mean, I'm just clarifying. But, Would but you this, support this is why I didn't want anything but a live interview, because... You know, frankly, I can't trust the media. Man, no matter I, with all due what respect, I this say, this is an issue that matters no, to I'm, people. I, no matter what I say, this is why I wanted it because I know that what people in the media do is they cut and they clip, and that's not right. That's not fair. That's why I wanted this to be a live interview. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're doing. And that's why I wanted it to be live because I've experienced this too many times where I say one thing, and by the time you all are done with it, and I think in your profession, people ought to be thinking about why is it that you're not as trusted as you should be? Why is that? Why is it that we in the political realm will really no longer agree to interviews if they're not live? That's a problem in a country like America that's supposed to be a democracy because we keep getting the gotcha questions. I have answered so many of your questions. You've asked me the same question five different times, and I've answered it. I, you've asked me this other question three different times, three different ways, and I've answered it. But it's almost as if you're trying to get me to say something that I don't really, you know, I, I don't understand. I'm certainly not in the business of trying to put words in your so mouth. I, I just want people to understand where you stand on these issues. Let's stop this interview now. Okay. Do you have anything I've else you'd like to add? I've asked, you've asked me the questions, and I've answered them. We're going to look and see what the bill looks like. Mm -hmm. We're going to argue about it, and then we're going to vote. Okay. Well, Thank I appreciate you your time. Much. Is there anything you'd like to add? Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.